In order to understand the composition of chemical compounds, both with respect to qualitative and quantitative aspects, there were many laws put forward by scientists. Okay? So that is called the laws of chemical combination. So the first law is the law of conservation of mass that states that matter is neither created nor destroyed during any physical or chemical change okay, during the reaction. So that is the total mass of reactants will be always equal to the total mass of products. Let us see some example. Suppose I take ice. Okay. So ice is nothing but the solid form of water. Okay. So that if we heat it, I will get water which is a liquid. So this is also H2O, okay. the mass is 18 and this also is 18. Okay. Only thing is there is a physical change from ice to water. Another example would be like you know, suppose let me react H2 plus Cl2 giving you 2 HCl. Let us see this with respect to grams. Okay. So hydrogen, so mass is 1, so let us take this as 2 grams and chlorine, 2 chlorine, each chlorine is 35.5, so this will be 71 grams. This would be equal to, so if I add this multiply by 2, this will be 73 grams. Okay. So you can see the mass of reactants is equal to the mass of the product. The next law is the law of definite proportion. This is also called law of constant proportion. Okay? So this states a pure co chemical compound regardless of its source is always made up of the same elements combined together in a fixed proportion by weight. Okay? So let me explain this law. Suppose I take water. Okay? So H2O. So what is the ratio of the masses? So hydrogen to Okay, is to oxygen is 16 or is 1 is to 8. Okay. So water in water, hydrogen and oxygen is in the ratio 1 is to 8. So this water may be from the river or sea water okay, or the tap water. So regardless of its source, okay, the composition always remains the same. Okay. Another example, let me tell you, calcium carbonate. Okay. So this, if I prepare it in the lab, I have to react CaO plus CO2 giving you calcium carbonate. Okay. So either I prepare this in the lab or I get it naturally, this calcium carbonate, the ratio of calcium is to carbon and oxygen will remain always the same. So the third law is the law of multiple proportion. This states that when two elements combine to form two or more compounds, the weight of one of the element which combined with the fixed weight of the other bear a simple whole number ratio. So let me explain this law with an example. So when two elements combine to form two or more compounds, so let me take the two element as carbon and oxygen. Okay? So this can either form carbon monoxide okay? or it can also form carbon dioxide. Let us see the ratio of their masses. So here carbon is 12 mass is to oxygen is 16. Okay? Now in this case carbon is 12 and oxygen is 32. So the fixed mass is your carbon, the varying element is your oxygen. So now whatever is varying this oxygen, if you take the ratio of these two, so this would be 16 is to 32 which is nothing but 1 is to 2. Okay? So which combined with the fixed weight of the other, this bears a simple whole number ratio. Okay? Let me show you another example also. Let us take sulfur and oxygen. This can form either sulfur dioxide or it can also form sol sulfur trioxide. The ratio of their masses is ox sulfur is 36 is to 32. Now in this case it is 36 is to 48. Now the way the sulfur is fixed and oxygen is varying. Let me see the varying uh, elements ratio. So that is 32 is to 48 which is nothing but 2 is to 3 ratio. So this will bear a simple whole number ratio. The next law is a law of reciprocal proportion. This states that when two different elements A and B separately combine with the same weight of the third element C, the ratio in which they do so will be the same or some simple multiples of the ratio in which A and B directly combine with each other. So this law looks a uh, little complicated but with an example it will be very easy. So let me consider this A and B element as okay, sulfur and oxygen. Okay? So let me consider this as A and this as B. 
Okay. So, A and B separately combined with the same weight of the third element C. So, let me consider the third element as hydrogen which is C. Okay. Now, the ratio in which they do so will be the same or some simple multiples of the ratio in which A and B directly combine. So, these two okay, hydrogen and sulfur will combine to give you H2S. Okay. So, this will be in the ratio 1 is to like you know 16. Okay. Now, if hydrogen and oxygen combine this will be H2O. So, this will be in the ratio 1 is to 8. Okay. Now, if they combine with the fixed mass, you can see the simple ratio here. Now, when the element A and B separately combine, so these two can form sulfur dioxide, which will be in the ratio 1 is to 1. Okay. Another example I can show you. So, let us take carbon and sulfur as A and B. This can combine with the element C, which is fixed now. So, this would be fixed and this is A and B. Now, carbon and oxygen can combine to give you carbon dioxide and sulfur and oxygen can combine to give you sulfur dioxide. So, what is the ratio here? So, this would be 3 is to 18 and sulfur dioxide will be 1 is to 1. Now, if they separately combine, A and B separately combine, that also will be a simple ratio that to form carbon disulfide which is 3 is to 16. In the next law is the Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. So, this law is applicable only for gaseous reactants and products. Okay? So, this law states that at a given temperature and pressure, the volumes of all the gaseous reactants and products bear a simple whole number ratio to each other. So, let us take the gaseous reactants. Suppose, let me take hydrogen and chlorine both in the gaseous state, okay? giving you 2 HCl. So, this also should be a gas. Now, what is the ratio if I take 1 mole of H2 reacts with 1 mole of Cl2 to give you okay, 2 moles of HCl or the volume is in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 2. So, that is what it says that bear a simple whole number ratio to each other 1 is to 1 is to 2. Another example I can show you. Suppose, let us consider N2 gas reacts with H2 gas okay, to give you 2NH3. Okay, this is also gas. Now, what is the ratio of the combining volumes? So, this is 1 volume is to 3 volume is to 2 volume. So, again this is a simple ratio.